What's up, All Resource Nation? Welcome to another edition of a masterclass series with three of my really good friends. And I'm really excited because today we get to have a conversation with three absolute studs, entrepreneurs in the making, and also kind of like an OG entrepreneur in Barry Habib. So usually people use Barry for like market predictions and what, what are rates gonna do? You've seen him on TV, but today we're gonna pick his brain and Megan Anderson and Dan Habib's brain about building successful companies and kind of finding out the, the secret to success, the formula. Uh, again, Barry usually is leveraged in different ways, but most of you guys may not know his backstory. He's built several companies, several successful companies, high-tech audio, uh, RE Family Connect, uh, Connection, Certified Mortgage Associates, Mortgage Market Guide, which is when I first met Barry many, many years ago, Certified Mortgage Planning Specialist, Rock of Ages, yes, the Rock of Ages on Broadway, Healthcare Imaging Solution, MBS Highway Social Survey, whew, Certified Mortgage Advisor, and not to mention, my friends pretty much mentored anybody, anybody that's on the speaking circuit right now in both real estate and lending, so he's done quite a bit. So Barry, first of all, Good job, man. Like, when do you sleep? And also, thanks for being here, man. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. So, again, I love it. We're going to switch it up today and pick your brain more about, you know, you being the ultra entrepreneur and how lenders and realtors can learn from your success on how you built your companies and built your team. So let's start with Megan and Dan. You guys know these guys. They don't need any any introductions. They're absolute studs in their, in their uh, business. But Barry, tell me what you saw in both Megan and Dan as you started building the MBS Highway team. Like what 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 struck uh, like stuck out to you? Well, I had a big advantage with Dan because uh, <laughs> knowing him, knowing him from birth, uh, it's it's uh, it's really interesting to see how he has just matured and grown. And uh, so I've been blessed with four kids. And uh, Dan probably gave me the most trouble. <laughs> was, uh, was <laughs> Is that true, Dan? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I was a little bit of a, of a troublemaker growing up, but uh, <laughs> I, I certainly didn't have a choice. I was born into this industry. Yeah, the other three pretty much gave me zero issues and zero problems, but Dan kind of made up for it. But he's <laughs> always been super smart. And, uh, and man, I'll tell you what, Dan is very determined when he puts his mind to something. He's a great researcher. So, um, obviously knowing Dan very, very well as my son and, and being able to spend time and teach him, it's great. But you know, you, you have to plant seeds uh, when the ground is fertile. I've always said that. Uh, sometimes we try and force people to learn. And when they're not ready, it's, it's hard. Uh, so I've always tried to plant the seed when the ground is fertile. So uh, what I, I've always tried to do with not just Dan, but with anyone is try and see if we can inspire them at first to see what is on the other side of the lesson to see what the benefits would be, to see what things could be like and get them in that mindset. And then when they are, then you can plant the seed. Then you can deliver a lesson that's really well received, that's absorbed. And one of the things that I think Dan and Megan will, will tell you that I say to pretty much everyone almost a countless amount of times is don't memorize it, own it. And, and that's very, very important. Probably Megan and Dan can tell you what that feels like from the opposite end of things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, it's definitely been discussed, you know, since we all started doing the morning update, that is a lesson that Barry has very much taught me. Do not memorize. It is so important to understand these things. And, and Barry has a way of inspiring you to do that. He has a way of believing in you and inspiring you. And, you know, I thank God for Barry for when he came into my life and believing in me and helping kind of shine out this diamond in the rough. So, <laughs> thanks for that. Well, I've seen that, Megan, in both you and Dan, as you guys have grown in your roles at MBS Highway. Like, I've seen you guys own your roles, in, in the, in, especially in the morning update. Like, you guys do such an amazing job, and it's not something that is just scripted out. I feel like you guys have definitely owned that. So my perspective with the challenge that Barry gave you, I think you guys have killed it. You crushed it. Yeah, they have. They have. And, you know, we have, we have a from a business philosophy, which I know we want to get into, but first from a teaching philosophy, we have a very much a teaching environment. You're not allowed here to just tell somebody to do somebody or ask somebody to do something. You have to explain why, um, you know, even when you take it to our tech team. So you, know, you get these ideas and uh, fortunately we've been able to be pretty innovative and creative and have ideas, but you know, Dan, Megan, they contribute a lot to that too. And then taking that idea, 
moving it through a tech process so that the end user could see that, it really works well when the tech team understands that, when our team of developers is brought in. You know, believe it or not, we've got certified mortgage advisor. Our tech team has to go through that. I mean, just think about that, right? So, so they need to understand what it is they're developing, not just from a technological standpoint, but from a standpoint of how it impacts the loan officer, how it helps that loan officer communicate and articulate to the real estate agent, and how it ultimately helps the borrower and change the borrower's life for the better. Once the tech team understands that, then they can take our ideas and develop them in a way that becomes far more intuitive, logical, easy to use, because the last thing we wanna do is take a busy originator and give them more tasks or make their job harder. Our objective is to take the tool and make it so that it becomes part of the natural course of doing business in a successful way. And that's part of the secret formula. There's a lot of little secrets here. And it first starts with the philosophy. The philosophy that we have here is very, very simple. It's been with every single one of those businesses. This is the philosophy. Spoil your customer and spoil your employee. And we have renewal rates that I'm so proud of that when people see them, they're like, that's, that's not even fathomable, as well as zero turnover internally here. Now, whatever the business has been, it's zero turnover. One thing that I think, you know, that you really instill within the company and you mentioned it, that brings a lot of success is everyone is constantly always in that forever learner stance. Even you, Barry, like you emit that off and everyone else takes part in that as well. And you mentioned the tech team and we also mentioned certified mortgage advisor, you know, of the companies that Barry has created and started and our entire tech team, really everyone in the company is going through this course just to continue to be that forever learner. And it's going to evolve and it's going to show up in the way that we make our calculators, create them, talk to customers. And I think that is a huge aspect of why your companies have always been so successful. The turnover is interesting because as realtors and lenders that watch this, that's something as I travel and I work with top teams, I see we struggle as an industry with that. Like we are constantly building and rebuilding and Barry, you you know, is better, as good as anybody. You can't scale businesses where you're constantly going back to step one and having to redo that again. And so talk about that, Barry, like how, how is it? Is it just spoiling as far as not having the turnover? Because that's something we struggle with in our industry. So, so here's what spoiling means to us as far as the company goes. So now when I had a mortgage company, you know, I started my mortgage company when I was 29 years old. So I was certainly less experienced, but I got sick and tired of having people trying to constantly be poached away from me. And rather than make it just a price game or a compensation game, what we really had to do is make people feel that they were empowered so that we can trust them. We know they're gonna make mistakes, but we wanna give them that so they feel that empowerment. Then what we wanted to do was have them feel like they were growing. And growth comes from learning. If you feel that, wow, the person that I am, the company that I'm working with is teaching me, is helping me to grow constantly, that oftentimes is worth so much more because you feel much more fulfilled. You feel much happier. Maybe you might make a few dollars more somewhere else, but if you don't feel like you're growing, eventually that growth will outweigh where you are because you'll be more stagnant somewhere else, even if temporarily you're making more. And then the real magic is appreciation. Appreciation is just taking notice. Appreciation is, is caring. Appreciation is is really being concerned about that individual, their family, what they may be going through at the time, standing behind them, being loyal to them. Uh, these are things that, that create a bond that people don't wanna break that easily because how are you gonna find that? People in general don't feel appreciated. Yeah. So when, when, you, can, when you can notice things, and this, this as, as someone who's going to be in a position, you don't have to be the CEO, but if you're in any kind of a situation where you're managing people or where you have referral sources or where you have customers, it's on all levels in a relationship as a parent, you know, appreciation is absolutely critical. I mean, if you're an LO that's listening to this and you say, how does that apply to me? Mm -hmm. When I was an LO, what I would do is I would express gratitude and appreciation 
to my real estate partners and sincere appreciation and gratitude, not just saying it or going through the motions, noticing things that most people don't, being observant, caring, taking the time. Because quite frankly, if you think about the life of your real estate agent who may be referring business to you, if they are in a relationship, oftentimes they're not appreciated. Many times they're working long hours, hard hours, weekends, then they come home from that job and maybe they have to take care of kids or a spouse or household duties that really make their, their life a bit trying. And oftentimes what they do is taken for granted. It's certainly gonna be taken for granted by their customers, probably by their kids, maybe by their significant other. So when you show them some appreciation that's sincere, not bullshit, yeah. okay? sincere appreciation, that they crave that. They're, it's like it's like a starved person getting whatever it is. So even <laughs> if it's a cracker, they're like, oh, it's the best right. cracker I've ever had. Yeah. Because it means so much to them. And these are things we can all do. I was going to say, it goes without saying to, to show that appreciation for your support staff, your underwriters, your processors, which are obviously stretched thin right now. And a lot of companies are, are trying to poach them away from you. So very important to make sure you, you show real, true appreciation and gratitude there as well. So Dan, was was I'm guessing he was harder on you because you're the son versus maybe just another teammate. Was that true? As I mean, you I didn't know you were a part of Mortgage Market Guy, and I think you built like the sales team when you were in college. Is that right? Was Barry softer yeah, so on you or harder on you? So first off, we'll we'll, we'll address that. I would say uh, harder for sure. I would, I would uh, expect you know, some that. People think that you know, oh, you know, you, you know, you work for your dad. You know, you might have it easy. But uh, I would argue that point pretty vigorously. <laughs> that I think he was you know, exceptionally hard on me. But I did uh, I did need that. I think a little bit, as he said, I, I did give him a little bit more trouble than some of my other siblings. <laughs> but uh, you know, my dad always always you know expected to bring me to bring my game to the highest level that I could. You know, he always told me that you know you have so much potential, but you know you're not you're not really reaching that level yet. And and, and I really you know want you to put in maximum effort. And you know he almost kind of ex, you know expects perfection be, or, or as high of effort as possible because that's what he puts out there you know if, I, if I'm going to be working my hardest then I expect every other member of the team to be raising their level to that same level so uh, that's always been some, kind of something that's been instilled but as far as creating the sales team at, at Mortgage Market Guide I initially started out just doing sales there and I was going to college at the time I was in a fraternity had you know several fraternity brothers that I was able to bring over and we really kicked some butt as a sales team at Mortgage Market Guide, and and we were very successful at it. And yeah, Dan Dan taught taught all of them, but you know, as far as being tough, um, I, I'm tough on everybody. Kind of, you know, I, I really, <laughs> Megan, yeah, is that I'm true? A loving way, but I'm very. I think Megan will tell you. I think just about everybody, I've made yeah, cry. Has cried. Yes, everyone in the office has cried at one point in time or another. And I take this as a stance of. None of us want to make Barry, like we want to make Barry proud at the end of the day. And so when we feel like we haven't made Barry proud, it can get us a little bit emotional, but it's, it's motivating and it's striving and it's never in a way that makes us feel kind of put down as much as it just makes us feel inspired and kind of, ugh, I didn't want to let you down. So many good takeaways yeah, I already. I always, I just also think he's so tough on them because he truly cares about, you know, the people that work for him, the people that he's teaching and mentoring. And he doesn't want one of us to be out there, you know, in a speaking engagement and having all these people in front of us and yeah. you know, not being fully prepared, not being fully, you know, comfortable with what we're presenting. So, you know, to, to an overly degree, he really makes sure that we have ownership of that content and that material. And we really practice until we get it perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Practice. I like what you said and highlighted, Dan, about, you know, Barry setting the pace. And that's what I've seen in successful teams and companies, even like a Jeff Bezos. Like those guys aren't resting. They're typically outworking their team and they have high. It's OK to have high expectations, guys. I always tell my team, if you're hiring, you should have high expectations and hold that accountable. Respect yourself and your business enough to go, no, I'm not hiring anybody but the best. And I think that's what Barry's done in his companies. And that's a huge takeaway that you don't you don't rest. You still set the pace for your team to follow. And yeah, you know, you got to encourage them a little bit uh, to run at that same pace. I'm, am I right, Barry? You are so right. And the fact of the matter is, I don't look as experience as a barrier to entry. Um, the way I look at it is very simple. And I've always said this for many years, attitude, aptitude, initiative, and a mm. sense of urgency. Give me those four things and I can teach you the rest. So it's a, two, it's a partnership. If you're going to be building a team, which you really need to be doing, 
building a business, building an empire, whatever it is that you want to build, building your legacy, building your future, you have to be committed to that. So we can't give what we don't have. Have you put yourself in an area where you're investing the most important asset that you have in your brain? Are you investing in that? Do you have something to teach? Are you constantly learning so that you can do that? And then you could pretty much hire anybody because if A, you've invested in yourself to gain the knowledge and then from there you're willing to invest, not spend, invest the time to teach it. Then you look for people that have attitude, aptitude, initiative and a sense of urgency. Why do we choose those things? So Megan, God bless her, Megan was a fitness model. Mm -hmm. And Megan was then at a conference where she was working for uh, another company that provided ancillary services on the credit side. And we started to talk and you know, she started to see some of the things that we were doing. And, you know, Megan, I could see she had amazing attitude. She was really positive about things. She had great aptitude. She's very, very smart. She constantly took initiative. She was the first one to, to send correspondence and say that this is the thing she wanted to learn. Here's what her plan was. And then doing it right away, that sense of urgency. The more we procrastinate, the harder it gets because it never gets easier. Pushing it off to later mm. just makes it worse and pushes other things off. Doing it right now to the best that you can. I mean, sometimes you can take it to the extreme, extreme and I'm guilty of it because I can even make myself a little nuts because <laughs> I try and do it right now. Um, but that's the philosophy. If you can hire people with those qualities, if you look around the office here, very few people were taken from positions where they were experienced. We home grew everybody, but we looked for those really important qualities. Do you have the right attitude? Can you get along well with everybody else? Can you be part of a team? Are you teachable and coachable? Are you willing to learn? Do you have that mental attitude? Do you have the aptitude? I mean, are the lights on? You know, are you, are you able to learn and have the desire to learn? And then initiative. Are you gonna sit around and wait for me to tell you? Or are you gonna look for opportunities? Are you gonna look that. for ways to, to move forward. And then the sense of urgency that you want to do it right now. You want to accomplish more in that 24 hours than somebody else is because you only have 24 hours. Love that. That's the main thing we have to understand. We can make more of everything else except time. We can always make more money. We can always do, but time and the way that you approach the limitation of time and what you're able to do and accomplish in that time is ultimately what sets you apart from everybody else and determines the level of your success. It's that simple. I said it, I mean, this year, January 1st came around and everybody started at zero and everybody has the same amount of time. And you can look at that producer that did 125 million and maybe you did 15 million. Guess what, Barry's right. They had the same amount of time. They leveraged it more wisely and more efficiently. And so there's a lot to learn from that person, but we all have the same amount of time. I look at myself, it's you know like Jay-Z, it's my age. He's had the same amount of time and has accomplished, you know, infinitely more than I have. And so uh, there's always another level there. And well, first of all, brother, you've accomplished a lot. And you do <laughs> a lot of good and you're a great leader. So there's a lot of people going to look at you and say, look at what you've accomplished. So um, but I'm glad it's, you have the right that. attitude to compare it to others and continue to strive hard. So you have the right attitude, but you need to be proud about all the good things you're doing. So here's the thing is I hear so many people today say, well, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. If you're that busy, I mean, think about what we have as we go into 2021, about as low of interest rates as mm -hmm. we've ever seen. Wow, what a tailwind. Oh, wait, but hold on. Hottest real estate market we've ever had in history, okay? Wow. And these are typically things that never happen together because if the real estate market's hot, it's because the economy is doing well, which means interest rates are not as favorable. If the interest rate, if the housing market's poor, the economy's poor, then interest rates drop. So you have the rare occurrence of having both. But if that weren't enough, you have more equity in homes than has ever happened before. What does this tell you? Move up buyers, cash out refinances, debt consolidation, positively changing people's lives. It's never been easier. You're not running into situations on a move up buyer where they don't have enough cash. You can eliminate MI. What a wealth of opportunity that you have. And if that weren't enough, you're coming off the best year in the history of the mortgage business. So chances are, if you're busy, it's because you're doing business. It's because you've made money. Now take that money and invest it in your brain, in your training, and in your team. In your Grow business, yeah. your team. Don't be cheap. Get junior loan officers. Get assistance. Don't say, I'm waiting for my company. This is your business. Pay for it. Do it. 
invest in yourself, invest in your team, invest in your growth. In 1955 in San Bernardino, California, there was a great burger shop and they were really busy. If they said we're too busy to grow, too busy to step back and work on our business instead of in our business, then McDonald's would not be the empire it is. They took the step back. They built that into an empire because they invested the time, the effort, the money into doing so. Everyone now has that same opportunity. You've been blessed with it. It's totally up to you as to what you want to do with it. So you said something that struck me, invest in yourself, but also invest in your teams, you said. And so I look at like somebody like Megan and Dan, you made an investment in both of them. And I actually saw, when you hired Megan, I said, oh, I could see how that could work really well for Barry and the team. Because so many of our peers in the, in the business, both on real estate and lending, miss and have that void in their company of that youthful person that can leverage social. Um, so when you hired Megan, that was an investment in your team. And I, I could just see how that worked really, really well. Megan, do you see that when you're out? Because I know you guys, you and Dan both work with several different companies. I see it all the time. Like, hey, you need to invest, as Barry says, into another person that kind of fill that gap. Because we're an aging industry. Let's be honest. Most of us don't know oh, how to. Oh, I, I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us don't know how to spell social, let, let alone leverage that. So it was brilliant, in my opinion, to to leverage and invest into Megan for the MBS Highway team and Dan. I mean, Dan, yes, you're the you're his son, but he didn't have to bring you along if you didn't have talent. I think I know Barry well enough that he probably wouldn't just leverage you to leverage you. So uh, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts on that, Megan and Dan. Have you seen the same thing as you've traveled and worked with uh, different companies? I feel like mortgage companies and banks, they're a little slow on this process of bringing in that young blood. Now, there are companies out there that I think are doing a great job of this and embodying, you know, kind of that younger sphere of influence. Um, I do think that it's important, though, and it does bring kind of an energy at MBS Highway. You know, we have a lot of young people in the office and we it just brings this kind of high level energy. And as you mentioned, I do think that it is important to bring in younger generations. I mean, the average age of a loan originator is in the mid late 50s at this point in time. And with COVID and the whole world shifting into a virtual kind of realm, I think that it is so important to gain that traction through social media, building our brand, having these kind of connections in this virtual way. So the thing with, you know, I consider myself, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, uh, you know, the years do add up, but I've always stayed uh, very tech savvy. You know, I've always stayed you know, kind of with it on social, but it certainly has helped having Dan having Megan, having everybody here being a little younger to keep me on that cutting edge. But I, but now I'm the one who's coachable. I'm the one who wants to learn. So it's this learning goes both ways. They teach me and, uh, you know, Dan's I on got now. Barry uh, on Clubhouse. Last <laughs> nice. There Look you at go. you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I would agree that, you know, investing in the team is very important. And, and obviously Barry investing in, in myself and Megan, but you know, going back to time being really the most valuable commodity out there, you know, Barry's one person, he can't do everything. So an important part of leadership is being able to delegate. And sometimes that can be difficult because, you know, sometimes you don't trust somebody to do yeah, it as good as you. Good point. But if you, if you get back to that, you know, not just having somebody memorized, but truly teaching them, bringing them from where you learned it and bringing them to that end point, uh, and then being able to trust somebody and putting that trust in them and that responsibility to do some of those tasks that you were doing, it frees you up to do what you do best. And, and when you take a look at some of these, you know, top LOs in the country, I think there's a pretty common thread. You know, it's never just one LO and maybe an assistant. They're usually teams that they have supporting them. And sometimes you have to spend a little bit more and maybe initially you're taking on a little more expense in order for the bigger picture to really grow. And it really comes to having that teaching and learning environment to make sure that's successful. Yeah, and you yourself as a leader have to be teachable and coachable. You know, we've got, you know, Diana is here, Jake, Chad, so many young people here, Matt, all of these young people that we're investing the time in to teach them. And then what we get back from as they teach us, you know, uh, Dan and Megan, you know, yeah, I spent a lot of time teaching them. And uh, what you know, I'll, I'll say it here publicly is, boy, I really depend on them because, Dan catches so much stuff and Megan catches so much stuff. Um, you know, when we plan for the daily updates and this and that, Dan will catch me a lot of times where, so it's, it's kind of nice to see that coming back full cycle now, because where I used to be able to be the one that had to kind of have that on my shoulders. It's so nice to know that these guys and many others that are here 
they've got my back. They, they make me perform at a higher level and keep to a higher standard and, and, and keep me wanting to push to stay up there. Uh, one more thing, when Dan said common thread, it's something I just have to share with all of you. Um, no matter what you do, no matter where in life, a common thread among successful and happy people is optimism. This is really a key. Uh, if you're optimistic, you will be like a magnet and draw people to you, realistically optimistic, but optimistic nonetheless. I mean, focusing, you have to deal with things that are negative and you have to address them, but always try your best to view through an optimistic lens as to how this can be accomplished. It will guide you. It will be your compass towards success. I love that. Always. Barry, I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you the final word, but before I do, I'll go to Dan and Megan. But uh, the question I have for you when we come back is all the companies, all the years, all the success, distill that down and give us the best advice for teams uh, as we close. But before we do that, um, I'll let you think about that, Barry. Megan and Dan, I'll put Dan on the spot first. You've been a part of the journey for a long time with, with Barry. You know, if, you, if you're talking to teams today, which we are with loan officers and realtors and really companies and any entrepreneur, what have you taken away? If I, what one thing pops in your head from, you know, building the team back in, in college to now riding this wave of success in MBS Highway, what one thing that you learned that you can share with us that would help us build teams? Well, you know, first I'll just share a really quick story. You know, one, one, one thing that kind of sticks out of my mind through watching my father, Barry, create some of these companies is, is you got to take a chance a lot of times, right? And I remember when he was creating Mortgage Market Guide, it was a very hard transition for him. He was going from being you know, one of the top originators in the country to really pivoting because he truly believed that he knew what loan officers needed to know to be successful. And I remember him sitting me down in his family room and telling me, you know, Dan, I have this idea. I want to create this company, Mortgage Market Guide. Uh, but obviously, it was a chance. And I remember him telling me, you know, Dan, there's a lot of smart people out there. You know what the difference is between a smart person and a successful person? Just going out there and doing it. So, so some of the advice would be to, you know, go out there and do it, take a chance. Love that. Uh, but, you know, I think one of the, the biggest things I've learned that he's kind of instilled is, is leading by example. And, and listen, my father, if he didn't want to, he, he doesn't have to work, you know what I mean? But I think truly believing in your cause, right? And, and for the loan officers out there, you know, providing families with, with homes, right? And, and truly standing behind your cause, but also, you know, just, just leading by example and working hard and, and setting the pace. Yeah. You know, the hard, yeah. Setting the pace He's still the hardest worker here, I would say probably. And, and, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be. So that's important. Team leaders listen up to yeah. that point. Megan, how about you? You've, you've been here how many years now? I've been here like four going on five years now. It's been a, it's been a while. And I feel like one of the biggest things that Barry has taught me that has ultimately led to, you know, me being more successful and stepping into my potential is we talked about it briefly is creating that sense of urgency and not leaving things to do tomorrow. And that's not just that one call that you don't want to make or that email that you don't want to send out or what the case may be. That's everything. That's the dishes that are in your sink. That's the laundry <laughs> that is in your dryer. It's not putting these things off because it gets really easy to do. The second that you do it, it gets easier and easier to keep putting that off. And like Barry mentioned, you know, it, it doesn't get any more fun the longer that you put it off. It still has to be done. And I, I truly believe that Barry embodying that and teaching that has led to him being able to achieve all of these really amazing things that we all look up to is that one simple thing of not putting it off. And another thing too, that I just want to say thank you to Barry. And I haven't experienced this in, you know, other companies that I've worked in is not only does he believe in me and believe in his employees, but he really allows us to kind of embody who we are and step up where that is. You know, he wasn't constantly trying to turn me into Barry, yeah, you know, true. talk about the markets, where rates are headed. He let me focus on what it is that I really value and brings me purpose. And he allowed me to build that up and, and also represent myself. You know, a lot of companies, they, they want to be okay with you coming out with a podcast or whatever the case may be, but Barry allowed me to do that. And in turn, I think it's been so great for growing MBS highway and everything in turn. So I just want to 
I want to thank you for that, Barry. Oh, that's and, cool. And Ryan, just an example on the on the procrastination thing. You know, sometimes it's really to an annoying point that he has to get these things done right away. But Ryan, <laughs> we had about five minutes before this call, and we have some upcoming presentations that he wanted to review the slides ahead of this. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Dad, he got four minutes, Dad. I'm like, I don't yes. think he squeeze this in. He's like, I love you sure? It. So anyway, <laughs> a big philosophy of his is, is get it done now. <laughs> so, uh, Get it done now. I'll throw yeah, it fun you. fact about Barry, he can't leave a dirty dish in the sink for longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> Get it done now. <laughs> Get it yeah, done I, now. Do, I, I do really believe in getting it done now. I, I, I do try to do that. I was I was that kid. And I know Dan was the same way. You know, a lot of kids would, would come home on a Friday. And I was the kid who had to do his homework as soon as I got home on Friday because for me, it was worse having it on my brain until Sunday night when everybody else had it, than just actually doing it. I, I knew I had to do it anyway. So I said, why can't I get the joy of being free from this as opposed to the burden of thinking about it? And maybe that's just the way I'm wired. Maybe some people don't care until it happens and, and they can enjoy it as well. I just couldn't enjoy myself as much. So I figured, let me be happier by doing it now and getting it out of the way. Yeah. And what I discovered and what I discovered from that is it actually freed up the mental capacity and the time to do so much, um, so much more, and then allowed me to be creative. I use that mental space, that mental bandwidth towards creativity. So we, we, we accomplish things by staying on offense. You know, if you're, if you're a baseball team, you only score when you're on offense. So we have to play defense. You know, a great football team who's got a great offense, you know, can lose a lot of games by letting the other team outscore them. So you have to have a good defense. You have to play defense well. So what's defense in our business? Yeah. Your follow-ups, you know, your, your, your knowledge, your learning. But while you have to do that, you need to remember that your objective is to stay on offense. And I noticed the vast majority of people in sales just play defense. Mm. And they take their incomings, they're this, and they, they, they manage and they balance that. You have to dictate your agenda. Look, I, I eat my own home cooking here, as we all do. We taught everybody here. You can use whatever method you like, but you need to work from a to-do list because it's up to you to set the agenda of what you're doing. What do you want to accomplish every single day? And then you have your long-term plans too, but you reach those long-term plans by the step and step and step by every single day knocking those things on your list that you want to accomplish that are your goals, whether they be personal or business wise, so that you can move your life constantly in as best in your control as it can be. Okay. Pray to God that, that, that that's allowed, right? But you want to be able to at least have that plan to be the driver of your life, as opposed to a passenger. You want to make sure that you're listing those things every day. You're checking them off your list. They're staying on your list so they don't slip through the cracks. Look, the definition for me of integrity is do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And if you can't, for whatever reason, be a great communicator so that you continue to build trust and confidence in everybody that you work with or everybody you have a relationship with. Guys, it's so good. So good. And to marry like the three of your takeaways. Again, I travel a lot, just like Barry does, Megan and Dan, and there is no shortage of good ideas but there is a shortage of people executing good ideas. And that goes back to what Dan said, get it done. And, and that was instilled by Barry, get it done, stay on offense. And I mean, there's so many good takeaways, guys. I want to thank you for your time. I look up to Can each of you. Can I say one last thing, Ryan? Yeah. Can I just say one last thing? Yeah. Because we've talked a lot about success. We've talked a lot about goals and they're critical and they're important and you need to have them. And you always need to be striving for them because listen, what we ultimately want here, here's what we ultimately want. We ultimately want to be happy, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's the goal here, yep. right? We want to be happy and achieving goals and achieving success certainly contribute to being happy. Take it from somebody who grew up extraordinarily poor, that money is a great thing to help you. Okay. And you can, and it even makes you happy because what you could do with that money for other people that really can bring you joy. But as you strive for success with one hand forward, if you really want to be happy, have a hand back to lift others, whether it be mentally, spiritually, or economically, helping with their growth, have a hand back to bring people along with you, to pull people along with you. That is what will ultimately make you happy is doing the both. So good, man. 
Love it. Lessons from our East Coast family, guys. You nailed it. I learn something new every time I talk to you guys. I appreciate it. I've been wanting to do this podcast for a while. So, Megan, thank you. Dan, thank you. Barry, thank you. Guys, if you have questions for them, hit them up in the comment section. You should be following, but if you're not, follow each of them because there's something to learn from these guys. Thanks again, guys. See you next week.